Welcome to our video tutorial on how to set up and operate the LF100 or LF200 series label finisher. First of all, you'll need to unpack your unit. Remove the screws securing the box to the pallet. Remove the plastic wrap and foam, and then remove the screws fastening the label finisher to the pallet. With two people, use the handles of the unit to place it onto a flat surface. Go around the unit removing all tape, plastic covers, protective foam, and zip ties. Connect the USB cable to the cutter, and connect the cutter power cable. The power cord can be found inside here. Take it from its plastic bag and connect the main power here. Switch everything on. Finally, make sure these knobs start in a counterclockwise position. Now you're ready to start loading labels onto the finisher. Before starting, let's make sure you have the LF Cut Manager software installed on your computer. It can be found here on the Astronova Product ID website. Before you begin, you want to ensure that the roll you're loading has both sides completely flat to ensure accurate die cutting position throughout the roll. Install the roll onto the label supply mandrel and ensure that it's completely flush with the backplate. Now use this black knob to tighten the mandrel by turning it clockwise to secure the roll to the core. Thread the media through the rubber roller assembly located here. Once the media is threaded to the other side of the roller assembly, lock it in place using this lever on the second setting. Your label roll is now installed and we are ready to load the laminate roll onto the finisher. In this step, we'll show you how to load your lamination roll onto the LF series label finisher. If you're not using a laminate, you can skip this step. First, take the lamination roll and install it onto the laminate mandrel. Before securing the roll onto the mandrel, remove a length of the laminate and secure it to the media. The laminate has to be narrower than the label material by a quarter of an inch and is centered on the label. Now tighten the lamination roll onto the mandrel by tightening this knob clockwise. Your laminate roll is now installed and we are ready to set the controls. In this step, we'll explain how to set the two sets of controls located here on the top of the unit. If you're using laminate, adjust the tension on both mandrels by turning the knob to the 1 position, which is the preferred startup setting. The forward media button when pressed is used to forward enough media so you can thread it underneath the tension arm, through the guides, and through the cutter until it exits the other side of the cutter. Press the media forward button to feed a sufficient length of media. The unwinder should be in an off state in order to forward media. In fact, you cannot press the forward button while the machine is powered on. Once you have a sufficient length of media fed, thread the media underneath the tension arm, then thread it through the guides here, then inside the cutter unit and underneath the cutter pinch rollers. Ensure that the media is aligned directly in front of the alignment paper arrows on the cutter unit. Now adjust the pinch rollers to the left and right edges of the media and above the textured side. Ensure that the tension arm on the unwind is in the middle position. If it's too low, pull the material through the plotter. If it's too high, feed more material to bring it into the middle position. Lock the pinch rollers in place by lifting this lever. Power on the lamination module by pressing the green on and off button once. Now press number 2 on the cutter. The cutter head will move back and forth and automatically read the width of the media and the cutter display will show ready when complete. If an error occurs, move the rollers to the textured side. Before we begin loading the matrix remover, open the software and load the cut file. If you need information on how to create a cut file, please watch our tutorial on how to create a cut file for the LF series label finisher. In the cut manager, load the appropriate cut file by clicking open PDF. Select the correct black size mark, for example, black mark 2 millimeters. Measure the distance between the top of the black mark to the top of the next black mark on the printed label, and enter that measurement in the distance between black marks field in your software. Remove the cutting blade assembly and ensure the cut blade is exposed to the point where you can just feel it with your finger. 
Use caution when handling the blade assembly. The blade should almost extend to the thickness of the material you're cutting. Set the cut force in the software to 7 and click Cut Test. You'll see a message asking you to move the label to the next black mark. In the software, press the forward media arrow button until the black mark is inside the blue window on your computer screen. Now you'll see the black mark is highlighted in green. Press Cut Test again. Check your newly cut label. If the cutting blade did not penetrate enough through the material, increase your cut force by one. If you can peel off the label but it gets stuck on some edges, increase the blade exposure by one notch. Never increase the cut force and the blade length at the same time. Always try one or the other before retesting your results. To align the cut, use the X and Y offset in the software. The unit is in millimeters. Please note, if you adjust the offset multiple times, the result is cumulative. Ensure that the die cutting is completely set up and adjusted before feeding the label onto the rewinder side. Any excess label should be removed. In this step, we'll show you how to load empty cores onto the finished label and matrix take-up core holders. Slide the empty cores onto the two take-up mandrels. Ensure they are flush with the backplate. Secure both cores by turning the black knob on each mandrel clockwise. Continue to operate the system so you have a sufficient amount of media to thread the matrix remover. Now guide the media between the metal guides and under the tension arm and over the first aluminum roller. Then bring the media down and under the next aluminum roller. Continue to pull the media over the next two aluminum rollers, then up towards the upper take-up mandrel. Finally, lower the sponge roller. Take a close look at the threading diagram on your LF label finisher. Separate the waste matrix from the media. Pull the waste back and then straight up and apply it directly over the matrix remover core. Secure the matrix to the core, then lower the pressure arm directly over the matrix take-up core. Pull the media down, ensuring it's taut. Ensure the back edge of the media is flush with the back plate. As we did with the unwinder, ensure that the tension arm is in the middle position and turn the rewinder on. The unwind station will show a flashing green LED when powered on, while the take-up station will show a solid green LED when powered on. Check and make sure everything is in place. Now you are ready to begin production by pressing start on the LF Series Cut Manager software. The slitter is used to separate finished labels into individual cores. If you are using the system to finish one across labels, you may skip this step. Remove the slitter assembly from its lock position by pulling back at the black knob moving the assembly down to its setting position, and then releasing the knob to lock it into position. Adjust the slitter blades to be centered between the die-cut labels and lock it in place by turning the black knob clockwise. Now move the slitter blades from the setting position into the cutting position by pulling back on the black knob and lowering the blades until they penetrate the label liner, then releasing the knob to lock the slitter into position. For additional details, please refer to the included user guide or contact Astronova Technical Support.